Israel lets some aid into Gaza, so the U.S. will keep giving it weapons to kill people in Gaza. Notes from the edge of the narrative matrix. Israel has generously and compassionately reopened the Erez crossing to allow aid into Gaza, as it is the only way to ensure that the U.S. will keep sending them weapons to kill people in Gaza. Biden sent Netanyahu one warning about a failure to protect civilians possibly costing Israel its U.S. support, and the crossing opened immediately, which proves a. that Israel has been intentionally starving Gazans by closing entrances off from aid, and b. that Biden could have ordered this to stop at any time. The Biden administration approved another weapons package for Israel on the same day Israel killed a bunch of international aid workers in Gaza and bombed the Iranian consulate in Syria. But please, tell me more about how frustrated and angry and outraged and upset Biden's feelings are feeling toward Israel. The huge amount of Western outrage and sympathy we're seeing over the IDF assassination of an international aid convoy compared to the systematic extermination of Palestinians we've seen over the last six months, confirms the West only regards white people as full human beings, which is a point we'd already seen driven home by the disproportionate amount of outrage and sympathy we saw over Ukraine. But you know what? We'll take it. Things are that desperate that if you can only support an end to the Gaza genocide if you see six Westerners get killed, I say welcome aboard anyway. Hopefully, this is the beginning of the formation of an actual conscience that's worth a damn. The mass media are reporting that the preliminary IDF debrief into the killing of several World Central Kitchen employees in Gaza has found that the multiple strikes were not carried out with the intention of killing those workers, a report which, if you ask me, has big CIA says it has found no link between itself and crack trade energy. Haaretz has a new article out titled, At Singapore Airshow, the Gaza War was a selling point for Israeli weapon manufacturers, which is exactly what it sounds like. One of the ugliest things about this dystopia is that acts of mass military slaughter are always immensely profitable for a specific industry. They're profitable in and of themselves, even before you add in things like land and resource grabs, just by helping to market and sell more weapons. Stop calling this a war. A war doesn't involve conversations about whether or not a walled-in population should be allowed to have food, medicine, and electricity. If you have that much control over a population, you can't be at war with it. You're just killing a bunch of prisoners. Tweet by someone named Carol Markowitz. There's no way in hell IDF targeted aid workers and everyone, including the enemies of Israel, know this. Comment from Caitlin. Pretty ballsy to say there's no way in hell Israel would do something bad six months into a genocide. Biden and his cohorts aren't mad at Netanyahu for committing a genocide. They're mad at Netanyahu for not hiding a genocide. I fucking had it with people who blindly regurgitate empire propaganda about Gaza. Fuck right off with your weaponized gullibility. The thing that's so pathetic about the push to blame this whole mass atrocity on Netanyahu is that the people doing this aren't even really going after Netanyahu. They're not pushing to send him to The Hague and have him imprisoned for war crimes or bring about any meaningful consequences at all. They're just saying we should feel negative feelings toward him for a bit, like we did with Bush. It's always about feelings with the imperial spin campaign over Gaza. Biden's feelings toward Netanyahu... Israeli feelings about October 7th, the feelings of Western Jews about pro-Palestine protests. The whole thing's been one non-stop appeal to emotion fallacy. MAGA Republicans claim to be a bold anti-war, anti-establishment faction, which is squarely refuted by their support for the Gaza genocide. Democrats claim to support human rights and to oppose tyranny and racism, which is squarely refuted by their support for the Gaza genocide. 